Today in this video, I am going to be talking about overheating in laptops, which is a very common issue in almost all laptop computers, especially if they are high performance laptops. So this laptop that was sent to me by a friend of mine is having some performance problems and is also badly overheating. So we are going to fix this. But before I fix this, I just want to show you how bad the situation is. So I've already installed HW info in this machine. And by the way, this laptop was using uh, some old hard drive, those uh, conventional mechanical drives that we used to see in laptops. This is, I guess, uh, a five, six year old laptop. Back in those days, we were not getting SSDs in laptops all the time. And this laptop is no exception. We have no SSD in this. So what I did was I went ahead and uh, disassembled this machine. I installed an M.2 SSD onto this and we are running fresh windows. So this is a fresh windows install and this machine is having an i5 8300H CPU. This is just a four core CPU and it is not going to boost too high too. This is just an I guess mid-range CPU for a laptop. But the problem is it is running really hot. As you can see, we are not doing anything on this machine right now. And the temperatures are going as high as 74, 75, 74, 73. And the highest it has already reached is 93. So this laptop is in pretty bad shape right now, I guess. Uh, I cannot feel any hot air coming from the back side where the airflow used to pass and I cannot feel any hot air coming. So this clearly means that there is absolutely no heat transfer between the CPU or the GPU. I mean, there is no heat transfer from the CPUs and GPUs die to the heat sinks. And that is the main cause of overheating. And that is mainly caused because of the dry thermal paste that generally is the case with most laptops. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just uh, uh, run Cinebench so that we are going to stress the CPU as bad as we can. This is actually not as bad as Prime95 does. I just don't use Prime for laptop computers. For desktop, it's fine, but this program just butchers the CPU. So I don't think it is something that you should do for laptops. and we have some numbers so as you can clearly see the cpu has badly thermal throttled and we are not even hitting two gigahertz it is not even touching 2000 megahertz it is running at just 18 94 95 96 and the temperatures that we have already hit is 88 89 88 89 it is somewhere around 90 degrees so this seems like a pretty bad picture to me and uh, a thermal paste replacement on this machine is going to help us a long way, I guess. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to let this test complete and then I'm going to just uh, get this laptop off this uh, uh, stand that I'm using. And by the way, I'm using this laptop stand too. Uh, let me show it to you. The laptop is on a stand. I've basically raised it up a little bit so that uh, uh, there is ample room for the air to pass. And even then this machine is helpless because the thermal paste inside this laptop must be completely dry. So as you can see, we have got a pretty bad score, 377 points only. And uh, I'm well aware that uh, the i3-8300H CPU can make about 800 points. So this is not even running at its half of its speed. And as you can see, the test has already completed, but the CPU temperature is not coming down. 84, 84, 84, 83. Current CPU temperature, even when the laptop is not doing anything. So this says a lot for this machine. I am 99% sure that uh, the only problem that this laptop computer is having right now is the fact that it has got a dry thermal paste. So I'm going to just shut this machine down and then I'm going to just open the back and we are going to proceed with the thermal paste replacement. 
Now it is possible that you might not be having. Now this is very much possible. Now this is for sure going to happen that you're not going to have the exact same laptop model. And this is not actually a guide on how to open this machine or any other machine. Uh, this is just, uh, this video is for those who are looking to fix overheating. For sure you'll need to follow a disassembly video for your laptop model. Just type in your laptop model and type disassembly and you're going to get a lot of videos on no matter what laptop you've got. Just make sure whatever you are doing is being done at your own risk. I'm not going to be responsible for any damages or anything that you're not sure about. So if you are certain that you'll be able to do it, just open up the back of your laptop or whichever way your laptop opens and only then follow this video. Just follow this at your risk. And this surely helps, I can guarantee that if overheating is mainly caused by the dry thermal paste, then this procedure is going to help you fix it. So finally, I ended up removing all the screws at the back of this panel. There were, I guess, a total of eight and three. So 11 screws were there. I removed all of them. And this back panel is off now. So I can get access to the internals now. And as you can see, this laptop is having a pretty decent sized heatsink. This is actually quite small if you compare it to the desktop environment but for a laptop computer that is cooling just a total of four physical cores on the cpu this is i guess decent enough for the cooling requirements of the quad core cpu so i guess this is a decent setup and what i'm going to do now is i'm going to remove all these screws and i'm going to remove this heat sink so that we are going to reveal the CPU and the GPU or maybe I'm wrong this is going to be the CPU and this is going to be the GPU so things can be a little tedious from here but I've done stuff like this in the past quite a few times so I'm hoping that it won't be a big deal By the way, you'll have to make sure to keep all, all of these screws in one place. Mm, I guess I'll need to get this entire fans assembly off too. Otherwise, I don't think I'll be able to access. So finally, I was able to detach the heatsink from the motherboard. And as you can see, we have some thermal paste on the, I guess the memory chips. And we have some thermal paste here also. So these uh, MOSFETs were also cooled by some thermal paste. There was no thermal pad that was here at all, uh, which is a good sign and uh, maybe some bad signs if this paste was of bad quality. But anyways, what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to clean all this up using some isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels. We'll do the exact same thing on this heatsink too. We have got a lot of thermal paste and all this stuff is very dry. It was actually expected and this is absolutely dry. I cannot feel anything as you can see. There is nothing that I can feel on my fingers that is a little liquidy. So this is all dried up stuff and once all this is replaced, I guess we are going to see a good performance difference. So I'm going to just clean everything up and then I'm going to return. So finally, I ended up cleaning the entire laptop. I mean, I cleaned the die, I cleaned the uh, memory chips, I cleaned the power delivery, everything. What, whatever was having thermal paste on it has been properly cleaned and as you can see this looks like 
in a much better shape now. Did the exact same thing with the heat sinks. Heat sinks are nice and clean now too. Next thing I'm going to do is use some good quality thermal paste. I have already ordered some Noctua's NTH1. This has been regarded as one of the best paste, not the best, but uh, uh, one of the best pastes that you can get on the market right now. So I'm going to use some amount of it on the CPU. And by the way, this is not the best way to apply thermal paste, but yeah, it is going to work just fine. one two three four five and six i counted a total of six places where i found thermal paste and we have applied thermal paste on all six of those spots so i guess all that is left from here is to just put this heat sink back on and have a look at the results maybe i should apply a little bit more thermal paste on these memory chips because they are not exactly as flush to these heat sinks as these dyes are so a little bit more is I guess a better option so at this point I have applied some generous amount of thermal compound and uh, I guess now it's time to just put it back on And that is it. We have completely assembled the fans and uh, the heatsink all together again. And all that is left from here is to just boot up the machine and have a look at how this performs. So if you have uh, a back panel like this, which can be just strapped on like that and can be removed later again, then I will suggest you to not just use these screws right now just make sure your laptop works and only then just tighten these screws and I guess it works just as expected so there you go this laptop right now is in a much better condition I can tell you So I have flipped the screen upside down and I don't think this is going to be a problem even though I would not suggest anyone to do anything like this. So the laptop is working just fine I guess. Yeah it is working just fine. It has started. It's working. No issues. If we did something wrong then there was a possibility that it might not have booted altogether. But as this is working it uh, clearly means that it is working fine so straight away as you can see we have a lot lower CPU temperature numbers here it has came down to 45 45 46 44 44 which is a lot lower than what we previously saw I've run the CPU throttling test and as you can see we are up and running and we are having a look at some significantly lower temperature numbers than previously. So the fans have started spinning up. Actually this is not the best position to keep the laptop because all the hot air comes out from this side. And now I can feel a little bit hotter air coming out from the exhaust side of the laptop which is always a good sign and the other important factor is we are having a look at some higher uh, core, clocks num core clock numbers too so at the time of running Cinebench we are achieving I guess around 3, three gigahertz which should result in some better CPU uh, better CPU scores I guess and as you can see under full CPU load 
we have achieved 6000 i'm sorry 604 points previously it was not even close to it but this is still a little far from 800 points that i saw on the on the internet for the i3 8300h but nonetheless this cpu is working i guess perfectly and the temperature is dropping as there is no load now it reached a maximum of 72 72 70 which is absolutely fine no problems and now it is returning back to its low 40s or maybe 45 so this is how we fixed this laptop computer it is actually not all that simple i have been doing this for i guess uh, a few years now so to me it is not all that difficult but for you it can be a little tricky and uh, you might not be in a situation to do all this so if you are someone who is not feeling confident then you can get it done by some i guess uh maybe someone in your area who is doing all this and if you want to uh, if you want me to do all this for you uh, i'm going to make sure to leave some links in the description from where you can contact me but i'm not sure i'm going to do that you can check the description for all that thank you very much for watching i hope you found this video helpful and interesting I'm going to talk to you in the next one. In case you have any questions or queries, feel free to mention them down in the comment section. I'm going to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you very much for tuning in. I'm going to talk to you in the next one.